Good morning. I am Officer Alexander Parker with the Austin Police Department Public Information's Office. At approximately 5.42 a.m., officers responded to 4701 Staggerbrush Road for reports of multiple gunshots being heard in the area. We also received information that there was a male with a gun. Officers arrived on scene and quickly lo located a suspect fitting the description. That suspect was taken into custody at approximately 6.17 a.m. without incident. This is still an active investigation. However, there is no active threat. Currently, there is one known victim who is being treated for injuries at the scene. We do ask the community for help. Anyone with information, we ask that you please call Crime Stoppers at 512-472-8477. And as always, we ask you to remain safe and vigilant. I'll take any questions. Uh, excuse me, I'm tired. I'll give you a message. He has to add a few words here. Oh, yeah, you bet. Good morning, I'm Captain Krista Stedman, Deputy PIO for Austin Travis County EMS. Um, so Austin Travis County EMS has evaluated one patient with minor injuries from this incident who refused transport to the hospital. Um, what we wanna stress to the public is it's important to understand that an active attack response is a type of response plan, um, and it's not necessarily an indication of the type or size or scale of any specific attack or incident. Um, it's a pre-planned response that we and our public safety partners have so that we have the appropriate resources in place should that need arise. Now we can take questions. All right, we're happy to take any questions you guys may have. That someone was treated on the scene. Did this happen in the apartment complex or just on the road nearby? The information we have is that it happened in the apartment complex. In a unit in the parking lot? I believe it was a combination of both. So there was a particular unit involved, but then also reports of a male walking around with a gun. AISD was saying that the individual was aiming the gun in the air. Was this a targeted attack or was this a We do believe that this was a targeted attack. It was not a, it doesn't seem to have been random, but investigators are still looking into it. Did the two parties know each other? Sorry. Did the two parties know each other? I can't say for certain. There's some talk about that, but as I said, detectives are currently speaking with the suspect and other involved parties, so we should have more information soon. What if, go ahead. No, go ahead. You said minor injuries. What does that entail? So typically minor injuries are going to be things like um, scrapes or even so much as like a small broken limb or something of that nature, something that doesn't require immediate treatment or transport to the hospital and doesn't pose any type of life threat. That kind of thing, yeah. So is the victim the person that you believe was targeted in this attack? I can't say for certain yet. Is there more than one person suspect that was involved in this shooting? At this time, we believe that there's just the one suspect who we have in custody. Do you know the age uh, of the suspect and the victim? We are not at liberty to disclose that right now. Did you say shots were fired? Yes, ma'am. Multiple shots. But did it hit any, anybody or anything? So it's still an active scene in terms of investigative wise. We're still checking to make sure that we have found everyone that's injured. But at this time, we only know of one patient who has minor injuries. And was that person in their apartment, in a different apartment? Where, how were they injured? Like where, where were they? That information I don't have, I'm sorry. Do you know what kind of weapon was used, what kind of gun? Um, I believe it was a long gun, or a rifle possibly. Any other questions, you guys? The 911 call, did that come from one of the people involved in this situation or somebody else that was in the building? We received multiple 911 calls, which is why I think we kind of were initially thinking that it was an active attack. Um, but most of the calls were just saying that they could hear lots of gunfire. I know you, you talked about the response effort here. When it comes to being outside of a school so close, has, has anything changed? I mean, in terms of that response? You know, the thing is, we, we are going to do everything we can to be prepared for... I, I'm going to let the... We're looking to be prepared for whatever it is that may come. So we are going to treat every situation like it's the worst, and we're going to hope for the best. So it wouldn't necessarily change the type of response, but that's because we're going to err on the side of being overly prepared or overly cautious to begin with. Any advice to parents? I know there was a lot of police cars and a lot of activity out here this morning. Some kids were continuing to you know, walk in to the school. Any advice to them in a situation like this? 
sure. I, I would suggest that you take comfort in the fact that officers were able to get this gentleman into custody pretty quickly. Uh, and at this time, we only know of the person with minor injuries. But of course, always we want everyone to remain vigilant, be aware. Um, if you see something, say something. So if you're seeing suspicious activity, please make sure you call into 911. Any possible charges that the, the suspect could face? Absolutely. It's looking like it'll be an aggravated assault related offense. Do we know a motive for why this occurred? Not as of now. As a detective is speaking with the suspect, I don't know what information he'll, he'll give them. So it's still pretty early on in the investigation. We just wanted to make sure we got this out to you guys. I believe there was some scanner traffic that talked about they were brothers or had some sort of like sibling relationship. Is that? Uh, right? No, sir. I, th I think that possibly they thought the suspect was with someone else. But in terms of who the attack was against, there's no relation that we're aware of. Sure. So the information came out pretty quickly and we got resources in the area pretty quickly. And so before we, we knew that we definitely had the suspect in custody, we wanted to make sure we weren't missing anything else. They were also helping to make sure that there weren't any other victims or anything of that nature that we needed to locate. There's two apartment complexes. Do you know which apartment complex this happened at? I'm not familiar with the area, but what I do know is it actually happened at 4701 Staggerbrush. So whichever of the two that is. And just in terms of the active attack response, do you know kind of how many resources were out here? This was, I've never seen this many resources. Sure, many. I, EMS was sharing with me the number of resources that they dedicate, so I can allow her to answer that. Sure, so for EMS, when, for EMS, when we respond to an active attack, we send a total of 15 different um, types of units. We send five of the closest ambulances, we send five of the closest district commanders, and we send five of the closest single provider response units. Um, so you get a total of, of, of 15 uh, sets of, of crews. And for police, you're typically going to see whichever units are available in sector, but then also for this, this kind of thing, when there's so much that's unknown, they're gonna sound out for officers to respond from neighboring sectors. So then you'll also have lieutenants and, and sergeants that'll make the scene as well. As well. Absolutely, but we'll do it every time because we, the, you know, whoever needs us, that's where we want to be. Um, so we're prioritizing, but we're certainly shorthanded and we're doing the best that we can. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, y'all.